Now, you did mention that we had some new agents coming up, and I promised we'd get to them. So there are at least two. Let's take a look at these guys. There's a Dalbavancin and Oritavancin, right? What's so special about these drugs that, that we're talking about them today in this setting? Well, what makes them special is that uh, they both have activity against the relevant pathogens that are the most common causes of skin infections, which are the gram positives, the strep, and the stuff, including MRSA. And so their spectrum of activity is very relevant to skin infections, and both are indicated for uh, acute bacterial skin These are lipoglycopeptides, right? That's right. And so they are like, a, you know, in a sense, a new generation vancomycin with some additional um, uh, properties. And of course, what makes them most unique is their very long half-life that allows the entire course to be given in one infusion. The entire course in one infusion. What does that mean? Well, it means that uh, once you are done infusing the antibiotic, you took away the need for IV antibiotic as an indication for anything. We just had a long discussion about the fact that many patients get admitted from the emergency department for the sole reason of requiring IV antibiotics. Once you gave them the last drop of one of those two, Ritavancin or Dabavancin, by that you took away the IV antibiotics. You took the one indication for admitting them, and now there's no reason to admit them. So that's only one example for that. Another example for that is that if you compare them to a long course of multiple times a day, adequate antibiotic like vancomycin, for example, um, their um, effectiveness is, yep. is, is uh, equivalent. Let me be sure I'm hearing this correctly. Maybe I'm not. Their half-life is such that if you give them one dose, they don't have to come back ever again for more antibiotics, or it's one dose is good for the Day. What are you saying? It's one dose and then they don't have to come back. You gave them all of the antibiotics that they needed and they don't have to get any additional antibiotic therapy. You're kidding, right? This is good. Well, try to imagine we have the one dose antibiotic for any type of uh, infection. I, I, I'm, that we I'm have. just flabbergasted. We would, yeah, yeah. This, I mean, is, this yeah. is wonderful. Now, we have these two agents. First of all, um, activity against gram positive, gram negative, uh, advantages and disadvantages here in terms of resistant species. What does all this look like? So I think, you know, activity specifically against gram positives. So, a very similar profile to vancomycin. You're not going to have the, the gram negative coverage. Um, but outside of that, you know, as he mentioned, being able to give a, a full course of therapy in one time. Um, you know, very similar profile between aridavance and dalbavance. I think there are some unique properties that distinguish them. You know, if you look at a, a cost standpoint, there's a little bit of a difference, but uh, specifically infusion time as an example. So dalbavance and 30 minute infusion versus a three hour infusion for aridavance. And um, I, I think some of the other things that get lost in the two are also uh, minimum volume. So uh, dalbavance can go in as little as uh, 300 mLs where you have to put aridavance in, in a liter. Um, if you look at mechanism of action, so dalbavancin has uh, one mechanism of action, very similar to, to vancomycin. Uh, aridavancin has two, maybe even three, so multiple mechanisms of action. Um, if you look at profiles, so we, we touched on a little bit about gram-positive coverage. Uh, I will say, too, aridavancin is going to have, especially if uh, enterococcus faecium, vancomycin-resistant even, um, I would have a lot more confidence in, um, in aridavancin. But overall, besides that, uh, pretty similar, similar properties. And uh, what about, about allergic responses, side effects of these drugs, uh, downsides of either compare the two? Yeah, I, I think if you look, um, especially with these drugs, the biggest thing I would worry about if I'm given one of these, you're giving uh, an antibiotic that's going to say therapeutic the body two weeks, going to stay in the body maybe even as long as a month, what happens if they have an allergic reaction or a side effect? And you know, when you have, uh, uh, spe uh, specifically with some of these, uh, like Dalbavance as an example, you know, they've got over 2,500 patients in their phase two and phase three studies they've looked at. They actually specifically looked at safety and tolerability. And what they found was that, um, you know, from a, a side effect standpoint, very similar to competitors, uh, linazolid and vancomycin. And also, if they looked at how long did those adverse events last, they actually lasted shorter amounts of time. So good safety and tolerability. Even problem. though the, drug, the, the main drug antibacterial effect lasted longer, the side effects were not a, a bigger issue. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that, that's reassuring anyway. There were a few additional advantages over vancomycin. Uh, sure. Uh, we mentioned earlier that we pushed the trough levels for vancomycin high, and uh, we now see more and more. Yeah, you were scaring me with that. Yeah, well, you know, that's, that's the reality of life. And um, um, I think that the uh, kidney toxicity is, is, is lower with dalbavancin. We don't have to monitor levels, by the way, and so it takes away all this um, entire system of having to monitor levels and what do you do with the levels and how do you... Um, 
The other thing is that you can infuse it relatively quickly, as you heard, that 30 minutes. You know, vancomycin, we tend to start with an hour, and if someone has any type of itchiness or side effects, we usually increase it to two hours. And despite of that infusion-related side effects, that has been an issue with this class of antibiotics has actually been seen in far less than 2% of patients in the clinical trials, and there were quite a few people in the clinical trials. So it, it, it's, it, both of those antibiotics are really convenience antibiotics. And, and you know, when you look at convenience, you also have to look at the convenience of the infusion itself. And part of the fact that you can give an entire course in a half an hour, another fact is that you don't need a pick line or a midline, which is a procedure by itself. And as you know, in many hospitals, you need to have special procedures to do that. And the cost is very, very high. It's many hundreds of dollars. And you don't have to go with that stuck in your arm and you know, having the risk of uh -huh. uh, having bacteremia and other infections related to the line. So there are multiple uh, advantages to, and, and I'm not even mentioning all the advantages that have to do with the fact that if you get this, you don't have to be admitted and all those risks of being admitted. Right. But I think that's a very big point, too, that gets lost is the central line side of that, is the, the pick line. And, um, you know, you mentioned cost over $1,000 to get a pick line in, especially if you start including, uh, you know, adverse effects from having, if you take on average. So I think being able to not have a, uh, a central line in these patients, and, and, you know, I can't say for other institutions, but for us, we have a very low threshold in patients that are admitted putting a pick line. I just want to say there is one more difference. Uh, both antibiotics are uh, terrific antibiotics that really, for the very first time, expand our ability to treat patients and, and actually make us change the paradigm. And we were talking about the paradigm change from admitting everyone for IV to maybe not admitting many of them and treating them in out, as outpatient settings with at least as effective strategy, if not, if not you know, even better in terms of safety and not being, have, having to, uh, to be in the, um, in, admitted to the hospital. And so another, another uh, difference between the two is the stability. And so um, dabovancin is stable for a longer period of time. And sometimes it doesn't really uh, mean much. But you know, once you dispense the antibiotic and send it to the emergency department, you really have to complete the infusion of feridavancin within six hours. And you know, three of those six hours are the infusion time and you know it takes time to tr and you know and sometimes what happens in the in the ED maybe more so than in the ward is that the patient was just sent to the CAT scan or the patient was just sent to have an x-ray or or God knows and you know by the time the patient comes back you know it may be too late and so when you talk about convenience you have to look at all those factors that determine conven convenience like the infusion time and stability and interference with with blood tests for coagulation and mm -hmm. so forth. I was say I'll be the pharmacist in the room and you know that's a great thing with Dabovancin so no uh, drug interactions that we know of. Aritavancin does have interactions with some of our routinely used anticoagulation tests. But you know, besides that, from a drug interaction standpoint, these are great options. So the INR is the INR. The APTT is the APTT. Yes. Um, let me ask some, some standard questions about any antibiotic. Platelets? Uh, any activity against platelets? Do you see platelet counts drop? It's not a major problem for any of those two. Okay, you don't see red man syndrome? Well, red man syndrome you can see with any glycopeptide, but it's far less common with those long-acting ones as compared to vancomycin, um, and it's far, far less common with albavancin, and that's the main reason why you can give it in a relatively quick infusion. I get it. So that, that in fact, is one of the reasons that you can speed it up. It's one of the reasons that you can speed it up. I mean, I've seen red man syndrome. I don't want to see it again, yeah. you know? Uh, are these drugs cidal or are they static? There, so they, they are, they belong to a class of antibiotics that's considered to be cidal. And okay. so in addition, so as you know, all antibiotics inhibit the growth of bacteria. That's why they're antibiotics. Then some antibiotics kill bacteria quickly. And those are cidal antibiotics. They kill bacteria quickly. If you compare the MIC, the minimal inhibitory concentration of Staphylococcus with vancomycin versus any of those two, milligram per milligram, the, the amount of antibiotic or the concentration of antibiotic that you need for those two is much, much lower than vancomycin. So these are far more potent antibiotics, and that's why you can give far less of those two as compared to vancomycin to achieve the same result. Yeah, that, both of these are, you know, they're cidal agents, but, you know, if you compare them to vancomycin specifically, vancomycin I would probably consider more of a slowly cidal agent. So I, I think that's one of the big differences. I mean, when the residents ask, does it matter is something is cidal or static. Uh, I'm not actually sure it does, except in those patients who are immunocompromised, whose white cells really don't work very well, maybe a cidal agent's better. 
We don't know. You know, Cytol is better than inhibitory because Cytol is inhibitory as well. You know, you have two antibiotics that inhibit the growth of bacteria, but one also kills bacteria quicker. So it's definitely not a bad attribute. To what extent is it a good or necessary attribute? We don't really know. And I would argue that in skin infections in most patients, it's probably not necessary.